Good morning, good morning. Hello, Stampers. Oh my gosh. I am so excited to be back stamping with you live. It has been way too long. I've been crafting and missing you all. And so here I am in Promptu Live. I was making a super fun um, project with um, some mini pizza boxes for a gift set that I am making and I thought I would just pop on live and see here I need to make sure that I can see what you guys are posting so let me see here Give me a minute to log into my page. Here we go. Okay, um, <clears throat> that way when you guys have questions or comments, I can see what you're asking me. My craft room probably looks different than the last time you were here. Um, we're working from home right now, and so I had to set up, hi Kathy, I had to set up my workspace over there and bring a table up here for crafting, and I've got all my supplies for this project sitting here on the table, but I'm a little scatterbrained sometimes. So hopefully um, I didn't forget anything. If I did, you're just gonna have to bear with me and I will run and grab it. Um, we are making a project for a gift set and I'm gonna use the Country Home stamp set. It is fall and this is still one of my favorite stamp sets to use. Um, for fall, um, not too Halloween-y, right? Something that can be used throughout the entire fall season. Um, and so we're gonna use that. I'm gonna flip the camera around so that we can get started. Let's see here. I wanna make sure you can see my space really well. So it might take a little bit for me to get this all set up. There we go. Well, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now remember, I live in a house of like four pets. So if they come in here barking or meowing. Oh, oh, there we go. Um, that's just life, right? Okay, so we are going to be decorating one of these mini pizza boxes and let me show you this okay Stampin' Up! sells these they come in a package um, I think there's eight in a package they come just like this pre-scored pre-cut ready to go and assembling these is as easy as folding along the score lines and putting this together. Now, you've got a shiny side and a matte side. You can use whatever side you like for your project. You just would have to fold your um, box the other way. You know what, this is gonna be a pain, so let me move that and we'll just use my... So you can use your bone folder to make these folds nice and crisp. I love my bone folder, great investment. In fact, I have three of them because um, we all know when we're crafting, we tend to lose our little floating pieces like that. So it's just easier to have a whole bunch that <laughs> I just grab. Okay, so let me get this going. We're just going to fold this here in these little notches. They fit perfectly right in these spaces. And then um, just like a pizza box does, this closes up. Now you could put a cookie or two in here all sorts of different gifts. I'm going to show you when we're done decorating the box, the idea that I have to put in here. All right, do some paper cutting. I've got a scrap of mint macaron here that I'm going to cut down to 
three and a quarter by three and a quarter. And this is going to make a nice kind of solid background for the top of our pizza box. I don't have as much room over here as I do on my normal desktop. So you see how this makes a really nice um, solid background here on our pizza box. I'm going to uh, glue this down right away. You know I love my liquid glue because it is so easy to reposition if we need to doesn't dry immediately so I like that I can kind of get it in the absolute perfect place okay now the one thing with this stamp set the country home stamp set is it doesn't come with any coordinating dies um, which in a way is kind of fun because then I get to use some of my other dies and I'm going to jazz up this background a little bit. I've got some watercolor paper here, and I'm going to cut a piece of this out using the Stitch Nested Labels dies. Um, these are great, and let me tell you why I love these. Um, I like the shape of them, and I tend to, um, with my projects, I notice I kind of have a style where I come in from one side or the other, and so what I like about this is it adds kind of a nice little pointed touch um, as it's coming in from one side. It's just how my style is. Um, and so I tend to really be drawn to that. It takes up some of that empty space in your project. And I'm using my old Big Shot here because I don't have the new stamp and cut and emboss machine yet, but it's on my wish list and coming soon. I'm just gonna die cut this piece out and now remember these are um, stitched so it's going to look like it's stitched all the way around here and that adds a really really unique touch in my opinion set this aside but I want to show you get a little closer to the camera you can see how all this does is perforate some dots into the edge of the die and it makes it look like it is um, stitched. Okay, I'm looking at my comments here. Oh yes, Lisa, I love these mini pizza boxes. They're awesome. And oh, Wynn, it's nice to see you too. I think that's Wynn or is it Winnie? I'm so sorry. I think I always say your name wrong. Um, I'm super happy to be back love it I've missed stamping so much all right we're gonna add just a splash of color to this watercolor piece so I've got my mint macaron pad here I'm squeezing it into the top maybe this didn't work out so hot these new stamp sets are a little difficult to there we go I just need a little bit of color here I don't need a lot and I'm going to get my watercolor aqua painter here. I'm getting it nice and wet. Dripping it onto the surface here. I just want a little bit of splash. Nothing too fancy. Nothing... Um, precise and I'm just gonna set this aside I'll clean that out later um, I wanted to do this right away because I want this to dry before we do the next step so let's do our stamping I've got a scrap of whisper white here in fact I stamped on the other side of it and that's okay we're gonna be coloring with our um, stamp and blends I've got them over here um, and so when you color with stamp and blends remember you're gonna want to use your memento ink pad 
I just re-inked this baby, so um, should be nice and crisp. Yes, it is. Oops, still need it open. Um, and now we're going to come in with our little flower arrangement on top. Get that all lined up here. Oh no. Let me see if I can fix this. I'm going to have to start over with this one. I didn't line it up very good. I've got another piece of scrap over here somewhere. All right, let's try this again. I don't think I got enough ink on the middle of my stamp there. See, even us veteran stampers have issues with that stuff. That's why paper has two sides, and that's why we have plenty of scraps to choose from. There we go. That looks really nice. All right, we're going to do a little coloring. Okay. I love the antique look of those um, kind of green washed um, tins and pitchers and whatnot. They're pretty popular. So the colors we're going to use, we're going to color this milk jug here first. I've got dark smoky slate and light smoky slate. And then I've got some light mint macaron. You can see I'm bringing that color through in each of my layers here. So, now you get to watch me do some coloring. And I kind of let my um, image be my guide as to where to lay my dark color. And I tend to like to lay my dark color when I'm coloring with the blends first. And all these little black lines here that's telling me that's where kind of the shady spot of this image would be. And so that guides a lot of my dark color that I lay down first. That's just a little tip I use. I'm not sure if that would be helpful to you or not, but as I get questions about how to do some of this realistic coloring, that's kind of what I have learned. And then anywhere we have a curve, I like to follow that curve line <clears throat> to bring out the dimension in the project. Okay, next I'm gonna come in with my light mint macaron. And I'm just gonna add, I'm gonna do it with my broad tip here. I'm just gonna add some color And then next I'll come in with my light smoky slate and fill in the rest. I'm going right over that mint macaron with my light smoky slate. I just want to bring that hue in and we may go back over this a couple of times to get it blended. As you continue to color and get these images wet with your alcohol ink, that's when they blend the best. So I've got some detailed areas here. I'm just going to flip over the side. Hopefully that is not too loud in the background. My husband is doing some work with his skidster today and it's really loud here for me. I hope you guys can hear me over it. I'm so sorry if you can't. Okay, now you can see that some of these shaded areas are not blending as softly as I'd like and that's okay. I just go over it, get it re-wet with the alcohol and the ink and it starts to blend in really nicely. I want a little more of that green light mint macaron color and so I'm just going to come in here and add a little more of that shading. 
and I'm following the curve of this jug as I'm adding in that color and then you just keep blending soften it up with my light I think I need just a little more of this in some of these there we go and so you can see I'm gonna bring this a little closer to the camera you can see we have just a little hue of that mint macaron in there I think that gives it a really unique antiqued look okay now next I'm using um, dark mossy meadow and light mossy meadow and I'm gonna do all the leaves on here. I picked an especially dark shade on purpose because I wanted these, this foliage in here to look rich and autumn-y. And again, my style is to come in with the darks first and then I follow up with the lights. I find that it's a little easier to blend um, when I do it that way. And I love the detailed tip here. The fine tip of these helps me to get into these small spaces really, really nice. So I would love to hear from you what is your favorite fall um, stamp set in the new catalog? I got um, my demonstrator order to reinstate my demonstrator ship is still on the way. But as soon as I signed up, I placed another order and got my 20% off. And I did that in two days shipping. So um, I have another order coming, but I received one in the mail yesterday. And it's got a bunch of Halloween um, products. I am making some um, treat bags for my team at work, and I'm really excited to get working on those. All right, I'm going to cover this cute little uh, flower here with um, Mango Melody. I've got dark and light here. And I like to just come in and do all these little holes first. And then I, I've got the dark coming in from this side, so I'm following that same kind of angle and shadow with my dark mango melody on these flowers. So basically I'm imagining the light is coming at my project from this direction. And that helps me to know where to place my light colors and my dark colors. Blends are so amazing for being able to do that. All right, here we go. And again, to get these blended, you just have to keep going over that alcohol re-wets and it helps you to blend your image. And now I'm going to use my detailed tip even more because I want to make these berries have a pop of color. And so all I do is just a little tiny dot of dark in each of these little berries. And I like to put the dark near the stem. And then I follow up with the light afterwards love of leaves and autumn goodness Ooh, i don't know the names all that well i might have those in my order today i'm super excited maybe i'll unbox it when i'm done here if we have enough time all right now we've got that bright pop of color and now we can't have a fall spray here without some purple i'm using dark and light blackberry bliss to come in here 
And so just like I did with my other dark colors, I am using the dark on this side because our light's coming in from this side. And I'm going to come in on a few of the other flower petals here. And then um, make sure I have the right one. Yes, I do. Blend the rest of it with my light. Get that shading going. This dark adds a really, really nice pop of color. <clears throat> All right, now we've got these little, I like to imagine these as little kind of fuzzy cotton flowers. And to color these in, I am using the ivory marker and then dark petal pink. And so the ivory, I'm just going along these dark stamped areas, kind of the base of each of these little flowers. So I start with my ivory. That has more of a lighter peachy tint to it than the pink of the petal pink. And then I'll just come in and finish these up with the petal pink and add that hue. These are subtle. That's okay, I didn't wanna leave them white. I wanted a subtle color to them. That's the look I'm going for. I think that's the look I achieved. And I feel like we need a little more of the ivory hue, so I'm just gonna come back in and touch this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, now for my super therapeutic part of this, I am going to do some snipping. Um, you know how people say that um, <coughs> coloring can be um, kind of a stress Reducer, I find that fussy cutting is a lot of the same. And I don't want you guys to have to sit through super fussy cutting, so I'm just going to kind of roughly go around this. Do you guys like to fussy cut? I'm curious if anyone else finds it as uh, therapeutic and relaxing as I do. Um, <clears throat> I always was looking for stamp sets with matching dies, and I was kind of overlooking those sets that didn't have dies, because I always like to have a Papa dimension with, like, my images, um, and I didn't want to fussy cut stuff, but then I was watching a lot of the artisan design team members, and they were fussy cutting all these I was thinking, where'd you get that die to cut that piece out? And I realized they were fussy cutting their images. And so I thought, well, I suppose if it's doable for an artisan design team member, it's doable for me. <laughs> and so I started getting out my little snippers here and cutting these intricate images. And I found it was really relaxing, you guys. Like... I really don't mind it at all. I'm just curious what you guys think. <laughs> Kathy says she doesn't mind it when she's in the mood. I will say that sometimes you're just not having one of those detailed kind of days and uh, you just don't feel like messing around with fussy cutting. Um, so I hear you on that because I've had some of those days myself and I just thought, I am not in the mood for this. Now, when I do my fussy cutting, and especially for this project, I'm leaving just, you know, a little 
a little bit of white border on my project and I'm doing that for um, a reason and that's in this particular case it helps my image to pop especially when I've got some white going on you know in my other layers like I do on the border of the pizza box and I've got a little bit of white coming through on that watercolor wash right and this is going to kind of help to tie all of this together now here is the cool part about these snips I'm doing this on purpose because I want to show you you can get into the tiniest tiniest crevices with these paper snips and cut these little detailed pieces out they're so so easy to get in here and just really detail your cut there that wasn't so bad huh all right now I hope my piece is dry here yes it is all right now I've got my sentiment because we can't be without that right I'm using blackberry bliss and the sentiment I'm using says you are the happy to my day and I'm just gonna tuck that in here on my little die cut nested label And now this is going to be propped up on here. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of eyeballing where I'm gonna want this set. And then I will come in with my snips here and um, actually I'm gonna use my paper trimmer because then I know for sure I'll get a straight line. So I eyeballed kind of where that's gonna line up. Let's see, do I like this? We gotta close the pizza box for the best effect, right? What do you guys like to put in these boxes? I'm so curious what your favorite um, gifts are to slip in here. Oh, I think that looks really nice. All right, I'm gonna glue this down. Got my liquid glue, my favorite. And I don't have to be perfect because Lord knows I'm not a perfectionist with this stuff, right? Okay, I'm going to line that right up with the edge of my box. And glue it down. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to show you something different that I haven't seen other demonstrators do here with these pizza boxes. Um, most people who follow along my projects, oh, of course I got some, that's right. My glue spilled out just a little bit on the edge. No big deal though. Um, I love ribbon or twine um, on my projects. Um, and I feel like it's not quite complete without that. And my uh, linen thread here is not being super cooperative, so I'm just going to cut some off of here. Set that aside. I have no idea how long this piece is, but um, I just cut a nice long piece because I want to wrap that around um, a couple times potentially. I'm going to have a couple bows. so fold it in half and cut it so I've got two strands of my um, linen thread. I hope this is dry enough now because I've got um, a punch here. A lot of times I use this punch for doing holes in tags so that I can add them to a project. What I'm going to do is punch a hole in the edge of this box. we go down here now I'm eyeballing this so hopefully it will work on the other side and I'll get this try to get it all lined up here okay so I'm just punching a hole here in my box I tried to eyeball it so it was basically even on both sides 
Okay, now, I like to wet the end of my linen string and I'm gonna push this through the hole here. There we go. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same that kind of twisted up here on the other side pushing this through the hole now what I typically see other projects doing is wrapping the thread around the whole box and then I find it's hard I mean then once it's open you can't get this thread back on here, right? It's kind of like, well, now I have to retie the thing. So um, I'm going to tie this in a bow through these holes, just like this. Okay. Now we all know when I use my linen thread, I like to tie a knot first to keep it nice and secure. And then I come in and I make my bow. I've got really long ends here, that's okay. I'm just gonna hold this and trim the ends. And then I like to come in with my bone folder. I almost lost it there for a minute. And I like to curl these ends a little bit just adds a little detail all right oh my dimensionals I forgot them give me a minute all right we're now gonna mount our fussy cut piece <clears throat> to the front of our card. What are you thinking so far? How do you like this project? Oops. Line this up so we can see our sentiment still. We've got a beautiful fall scene here. And, you know, no project is complete without a little bling. To be honest with you, I don't even know if all of what I have in here is still current. But, like, listen, you can use sequins, you can use rhinestones, you can use any coordinating embellishment that you want to. I've got these sequins. I have no idea when they're from, which catalog, if they're even current. They've got kind of a mint macaron sort of hue. And so I'm just going to come in here and add a little detail with them to bling up my project a little bit. If you don't have those particular sequins, no big deal. Replace them with some rhinestones or some other jewels. It'll work super easy. So here you've got this cute box and what the heck are you going to put in it? Well, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm an essential oil user, and I like to make um, roller blends for my friends and family for gifts. So I've got these different roller blends that I have labeled, and I noticed that these roller balls fit perfectly inside these boxes. So this is going to be a gift set for this fall with some essential oil rollers. For those of you who like to make essential oil rollers, you can also use um, various lip glosses would fit inside here for the same thing. So there you have it. There is my project. I hope that you liked stamping along with me today. I'm so excited to be back doing this. 
it feels like home and I needed my creative therapy. So thank you for watching. Um, I'm hoping to set up more regular lives and looking to do some monthly events online since um, I've got so many people asking me if I plan to do monthly classes um, and uh, virtually because of what's going on in the world today and people are just social distancing. So that's something I'm working on getting in the works. Make sure you are following my page so you don't miss any of that. Thanks again for catching me this Saturday morning. I know I will be back here soon stamping with you and I hope you have a great weekend. See you guys later.